the masters of medicine on the innovative edge come here to be with other people. Because in science, in medicine, in technology, there's almost nothing you can accomplish alone. You need others. You need that supportive tissue around you, and you need that connectivity to others. You set up the stage. You pick up the best people. You don't give up. That's how you get there. And Minnesotans are very good at that. The burden on the society really comes mostly from neuropsychiatric diseases. So we really have to develop the tools to be able to study the brain. The philosophy here is we push discovery. We are a collection of physicists and engineers and neuroscientists and others where we are pushing the tools and pushing discovery using those tools as opposed to waiting for that tools to be developed. And so we are always ahead of the ball, if you like, ahead of the game. So today, if you go to a hospital, the highest magnetic field that you will encounter, and maybe if you got your knee scanned, uh, it may have been in a three Tesla machine. This is the highest uh, magnetic field that hospitals use. Tesla is a unit of magnetic field. But we have here seven Tesla machines. Seven Tesla was uh, developed here, and uh, we put it together ourselves and demonstrated that it's possible to do seven Tesla imaging of human body. And now we are working at 10 and a half Tesla. And to be able to complement what we can get from magnetic resonance imaging in terms of brain function and connectivity, then we have initiated this development of the group we call MDT in optical imaging and where we are relying on optical imaging techniques. So when we're doing optical imaging of the brain, not only are we seeing how the neurons are firing in different tasks, but we're actually tracking the blood flow at a single vessel level in the living brain. So when you come to the lab, you'll see we have quite a complex array of lasers and optics that are set up that allows us to get these high resolution imaging of the neurons and the blood vessels under very various tasks. In terms of brain science, we have these large scale maps of activity. We have more and more information about structural connectivity. But now we can also record from single neurons up to thousands of neurons simultaneously. Understanding how dynamics in brain activity starts to go awry is going to lead to the development of better diagnostic tools. As we have better and better models, it also helps us develop better interventions. So you have these, these dots, right? And you collect the dots, and then, which is where the action comes, you, you connect them. I tell the story of a person that was an artist, and I remember her telling me, she said, I just can't paint anymore, because she had such bad tremor. And we put the lead down and we turned on the stimulator and we said, can you draw a spiral? And she was before she was doing this kind of thing. And she goes up and she starts to draw the spiral like this. And she just broke down. And then we're all getting teary-eyed, <laughs> you know, because that's the most important thing. And so that's why all these things that we do have to be directed at that ultimate goal, is giving them the best care possible. People here don't come here to turn on a strong magnet and then look at some graphs. They come here to help somebody with degenerative disease of the brain. That's the hope. <laughs>